You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. If some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Glory Hounds. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go, girl. Alright. <clears throat> Isn't it closed right now? Website says they're doing some renovations. Oh, she gave me, uh, like, special access tickets. Wow, look at you, making friends in high places, huh? You, uh, could say that. Better not tell him that I met the CEO, too. That would be all over the internet in minutes. Lucky bastard. The most expensive thing I ever got for free was a sample at the perfume counter. They waved their hand, closing the holographic screen in front of them as we near, ped as we near a pedestrian crossing. While we wait for the light to turn green next to a heavily made-up taper lady, Lou finally turns to me. Heavily made up? Okay. I wasn't gonna bring it up, but how are you holding up, Al? You know, with the job situation. I was hoping to help you look for something new, but I haven't seen you at the Hain, and we've barely even texted. Got caught up with the kids myself, too. I guess I did kind of leave in a hurry after a little night out. Sorry, I've been recovering from that fish ain't my mother. It left a really big impression. I think that one review was putting it lightly, to be honest. I don't think I can ever unsee that scene where the lady gives birth to singing fish eggs. What did I tell you? Cult a classic. True, only a cult could appreciate that kind of imagery. <laughs> Really, though, I've been doing great. I already got something new, I think. Just got just got through or my orientation earlier this week. That's fast. What's the gig? I, uh... I can feel myself sweating a little. Quick, Alex, make something up. I'm working as a cleaner. I, uh, clean... things. My eyes meet loose for the briefest of moments just to see if they're buying it. Clean what? Houses? Streets? Crime scenes? Shit, I know I should have prepared a more convincing story ahead of time. Get it together. You know they can smell fear. It's a, a private, a residential thing. Look, uh, the lights turn green. Uh, we should walk now, don't want to keep the cars waiting. I hurriedly waddle down the crossing. Lou quirks a brow at me, but follows anyway. You're not ashamed, are you? And there it is, my golden ticket. I slow down my pace enough for Lou to catch up. I, I kind of took this new job out of desperation. It's not exactly the kind of career move you shout from the rooftops. Lou puts their paws on, their sh paws on my shoulder. And being a cleaner is a perfectly normal profession. My cousin's friends, uncles, girlfriends, and neighbors' former lover makes a fortune off of it. Or are you cleaning, like, sex stores or something? No sex stores, just houses! Even if you were, there's no shame in it. I'm glad you found something. Thanks, Lou. Someday I'll tell them the whole truth. For now, half of one will do. Not that they'd ever believe me. Hell, I have trouble believing it myself. Ooh, that's pretty. So this is... Swearing's name. This is Opkido. It's even bigger on the inside, with a vastly more modern decor than I'd pictured when I heard the words art gallery. I was expecting stuffy dark rooms with snobs scoffing at paintings, but this place is open, well lit, immaculately clean, and smells like mint and flowers. There's so much on display here, I don't even know where to look. Judging by the expression on their face, I think Lou feels the same. Still, I can't let my guard down. Lots of stuff means a lot of potential targets for the Syndicate. Look at all these works, Alex. Just one of those paintings costs more than we'll ever make in our entire lives. I don't know whether that's impressive or depressing, but you're probably right. Though, with my new job, I might be able to pay one off in five lifetimes instead of ten. Ooh, I've seen an article about that one, and that one was in a video. That one's just a blank canvas. It's not just a blank canvas, Alex. Art always has meaning behind it, intent. It's all about how you perceive it. Maybe the canvas represents a certain kind of emptiness the artist felt. A lack of passion. Oh no, I think Lou's already started breathing in the paint fumes. That's just a canvas we leave out for the children to practice on. Fenna comes walking over to us, a little clipboard in hand, looking as refined and regal as ever. You'd never guess she was in a crisis of any sort. Lou's eyes flick between me and her, muzzle partly slided, parted, parting slightly. Hey, I mean, hello, Miss Fenna. It's a pleasure seeing you again, Mr. De Rouge. And look, you've managed to remain on your feet this time. The Sphinx Cat nudges me with her elbow. Are you going to introduce me, or...? Oh, Fenna, this is my friend Lou. They're a, they're a big fan. Lou, this is Fenna. The curator, right? Yes, indeed. Pleased to make your acquaintance. One second, y'all. Water time. You must have your paws full. This place is huge. It's quite the responsibility, yes, but it's one I happily bear. The arts are important. Their arts are as important to me as living and breathing. 
I guess eating and sleeping aren't exactly priorities for her. It's a joy to be able to share that passion with the world. Lou mutters under their breath. I bet it makes you a pretty penny, too. Lou! Now, the art you see here has all been graciously donated to us by lovely artists from all over the world. I take it you want to see the Money Talks gown. It is considered the pride of our collection, after all. I'm, I'm dying to take a closer look. That is technically what I'm here for. If that thing gets stolen, I'll probably be out of a job again. I'm more interested in the Van Heulink myself. Ah, I can imagine. We did have it on loan from the royal family, after all. Could you tell me where we can find it? It's uh, no longer in our collection as of this week, I'm afraid. You're kidding me. Why? Our backers deemed it not interesting enough for the general public anymore. According to them, guests these days are looking for excitement to be dazzled, and supposedly there's little excitement to be found in a painting from the 1800s. And you're cool with that? Fenna looks away in the direction of the Money Talks gown. There's a kernel of truth to be found in their opinion, to be sure. It's important we keep funds and interest up. A portion of our earnings goes to charity, though far less than I'd personally prefer. What kind of charities do you guys support? This month we're supporting the Foundation for Anglerfish with Dim Lights. Never heard of that one. Which is why it's a matter of deserving more attention. What are you going to do, buy them all flashlights? Lou, would you mind if I borrowed Alex for a little while? We won't be too long. Oh, sure, I'll go check out the statues and sculptures in the meantime. They say that so confidently, but the look on their face only spells confusion. I'll go checking out that gown without that gown thing without me, you hear? I wouldn't dare. They definitely would. I wave at them as Fenna beckons me around the corner into a hallway. We pass a janitor wearing a fishbowl helmet, who gives us a bit of an odd look. It makes me uncomfortable. The art on display further down the hall is very bold, let's just say that. The canvas looks less like someone painted on them and more like someone threw up on them. That looks, that looks great, what are you talking about? If I'd known messy stains like this went for millions, I'd sell them, ma I'd sell them Max's laundry. Oh god, that's horrifying. The Garden of Pleasure, the Garden of Pleasure and Sin. Edward Old Moulin, 1767. Ah! That just about gave me a heart attack! Following his departure from Batavia in 1760, Old, Old Moulin's environs were not the only thing that changed. The Garden of Pleasure and Sin was his bold first step into a new style, and is widely regarded as his magnum opus today. The brush strokes represent... How long is this going to go on for? Oh, this is just our new state-of-the-art audio tour. There's sensors behind the paintings that get triggered as you walk past. It's quite a delight, really. In what universe would anyone find that delightful? The impeccable craftsmanship is further illustrated by his creative use of what some sources say was his own blood. It's very... informative. If you think so, I've had the pleasure of providing some of the audio myself. And, but that is not why I brought you here. She looks left and right and pushes her glasses up her snout. We've closed up for the general public today, but there's still been no sign of the Saltwater Syndicate. Maybe it was a prank after all. Or maybe the guy you passed is the one. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. As long as I'm still getting paid, I'm happy. She takes the calling card out from earlier calling card from earlier out of her purse. After what Mimi said regarding its potential authenticity or lack thereof, I was rather curious myself. So, I found a friend who just so happens to have access to the evidence archives at the local police station. Is that even legal? <clears throat> and how does she get friends like that in the first place? The handwriting matches the one on the calling card sent to Mr. Ahab's previous previous victims perfectly. I shrug. It could still be fake. I forged my parents' signatures to get out of school stuff all the time when I was a kid. I was pretty good at it, too. Of course, I also got in trouble for it more times than I can count. Mr. DeRouge, I'm a curator working for an art gallery. We deal with works that are worth thousands, if not millions, every day. If there's anything I'm good at, it's spotting a forgery. They will be coming. Not a single establishment that was in a card like this was left unscathed. Is there anything else you could tell me about the Syndicate? Only what was in the papers. That'll do. I don't really read papers. Who needs them with a never-ending gossip machine like Lou around? Supposedly, the Saltwater Syndicate engages in heists, thievery, and plain old privateering, the likes of which hasn't been, hasn't been seen in Batavia in a long time. I didn't know they were so organized. I was expecting silly pirates, not the fish mafia. Bro, I mean, the, the Dawn Hound called them a little crew. That is partly true. Their numbers aren't exactly what one would call large, even though their leader most certainly is. However, they make up for it in efficiency and cunning, which is why I called your employer. I cannot risk a single item being stolen or damaged. I trust you understand. We might have state-of-the-art state alarm systems, but so did all the other targets. And I'm, and I'm supposed to prevent this heist by all, all by my lonesome? No pressure. I'm new to this, but I'll do what I can. If I see anything off, I'll call for backup. It's the only way I can handle this, really. 
You're starting to sound like a real hero, Mr. <clears throat> I mean, Duskhound. And with Mr. Donhound and Mimi for backup, you absolutely needn't fret. Why do you keep calling him Mimi? And how are you getting away with it in the first place? Oh, that? I had the pleasure of getting to know Mr. Drozdov many years ago at the, ship at the Shippersburg Tea Academy. An academy? For tea making? Learning how to brew the perfect cup takes time and effort, Mr. DeRouge. I wonder if this means Willem went to some sort of coffee academy. Sounds like a great place. Can I go there? <laughs> I know at first glance Mimi doesn't seem like the kind of man to frequent such a place. Bennett is practically bouncing with delight. But he has quite the delicate side, as I'm sure you're aware. Can't say that I am. As far as I can tell, he's about as delicate as a steamroller. I think being the only man in the class caught him off guard a bit. Flustered as he was, he stuttered when he tried to introduce himself. We simply could not resist the urge to make a lovely nickname out of it. She giggles and smiles as she says it. Are we talking about the same Milo? You should ask him about it. He ended up being the best in the class at the end. I'll consider it if I ever get tired of my arms being attached to my body. And for my own safety, I think I'll take your word for it. I suppose I'd best be as best get to scouting out the place. I know you'll be working, but I hope you'll enjoy the art display on display as well. I'll give it a look see. Thanks. I'm the one who should be thanking you. I appreciate all you're doing, Mr. De Rouge. I have, I have faith in you. She smiles, even though my nerves refuse to let me. I try to look her in the eye and smile back. I got this. I don't. What would Raoul say in this situation? Have no fear, citizen. Dust count is on the case. She claps her hands together in excitement. Splendid! Absolutely marvelous! Though, may I suggest working on your poses a little? You seem a bit stiff. Probably because of the bruises I sustained wrestling a dead but a deadly butler for hours. Almost a dead <laughs> wrestling a dead butler for hours. <laughs> if you're wrestling a dead a dead butler for hours, you're probably really bad at wrestling. <laughs> Still, she seems convinced enough, waving a hand at me as she walks off. Well, some call well, some called him a witch. Modern scholars believe his style was influenced by his peers who used their own blood to. Right, I better go too. All right, mission. Recon start. I say that, but I don't really know what I'm looking for. If I was running a motley crew of art thieves with a pirate fetish, what would I tell them to steal, and how would I prepare? If Max were here, I'm sure he'd tell me they did it in a phantom thief casino. One second, y'all. Water time. All righty. But he's not, so I'll have to leave it up to the whims of fate. I suppose I'd want to know... Oh, another lay of the land first. Let's start there. The gallery is two main public floors with actual works of art. There's a skylight above the atrium. Lots of hallways leading to different exhibits. This will be the perfect place for a dramatic exit. I picture myself, loot secured, busting through the windows and vanishing into the night sky without a trace. But I doubt the syndicate would be dumb enough to try something that conspicuous. Unless making my job easier is part of their code. Politicians through the, age, through the ages exhibit, the money talks gown, and old Batavian masterworks. Huh. Um, huh. The second floor is basically a loft with a clear view of everything else. Another janitor, a parrot with brightly colored feathers, appears to be doing a sweep up there. Oh, yes, I bet he fucking is. With this many janitors around, it'd be hard to be stealthy. He's looking at me rather intently. I suppose it's unusual for there to be that many people in here after closing. I decide to check for back entrances or emergency exits. Along the way, I scan the various paintings, sculptures, and other art pieces on display. Some of it's even interactive. I have absolutely no idea how to tell Priceless from Worthless, but since the Syndicate declared their heist so brazenly, maybe they left some clues as to what they're aiming to steal, other than the Money Talks gown. Oh. Well, look who it is. Whoa, this one's huge! I've never seen a statue quite like this before. Big and wide and buff, and it smells of tropical fruits. I'm compelled to give it a poke. Uh... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm no statue, laddie, but I'm flattered all the same. It talks? Oh my. I look up at the huge whale. Sure enough, he's breathing, blinking, and smirking. At almost twice my height. This man could crush me with a finger. I don't know whether that conclusion terrifies me or turns me on. <laughs> I'm, so, so, I'm I mean, sorry. I, I'm sorry for poking you. Tis as well you did, boyo, and nearly stepped on ya. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you should see the look on your face. <laughs> this is great. I'm so sorry, I don't often get to meet... Whales? Um, I mean, 
stop myself before I say anything bad. That's cute. That's adorable. God, he's huge. Pardon me for saying this, lad, but... Don't you know we closed early today? You aren't supposed to be here. Oh, we're a special guest of Fenna's da- I mean, sir. Sir. Look up at him, but I can barely see past those pecs. Do those even qualify as pecs anymore? They're freaking mountains. And here I thought Rael and Milo were buff. Mistress Fenna never said anything about guests. She didn't tell me either. Who are you? I be the head janitor of this here gallery. You're, uh, doing a good job. I haven't seen a speck of dust since I walked in here. Right you are, and I intend to keep it that way, Sonny. It's my job to clean up and haul out the rubbish that don't belong here. So let me ask you again, lad, what are you doing here? It sounds like a threat, but he has a whale of a smile plastered on his face. Hope he doesn't think I'm behind the planned heist. If he even knows anything about it. Should have asked, pumping folks for intels... Pumping folks for intel is what they do in the detective shows, right? Just gotta find an easy in. Oh, I'm just an art lover, I swear. There's a lot of uh, neat stuff on display here. Has anyone ever tried to, uh... I stop, realizing it only makes me sound weird and suspicious. Nick it? He laughs. Voice so loud it seems to shake the very hall we're in. Twould be quite the hall and no mistake, and no mistake. But no ordinary thief would think to rob a place like this. Security's tighter than the Queen's undergarments. And just as pretty. Not even a saltwater syndicate? Hmm. Oh, this is going wonderfully. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.